All right, I think we are officially live. So uh, welcome to this this uh, Friday edition, which is always a Friday edition. What am I talking about? TAS Power Hour, 2 o'clock. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be on here today. A lot of things happening um, this week. I actually just wrote my email. And Chris, I got I to gotta be honest. You know, when I write my email, it's kind of like a way for me to reflect on the week and kind of things that have happened. And um, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good. You're like... Man, this week we had some, we had a lot of like little issues this week. So um, yeah, so I just uh, I just sent that email out to everybody and uh, uh, was letting everybody know about some of our our struggles and hurdles and stuff. And I know we haven't talked to Dom much, and I'm from what I'm gathering, he's had some uh, some struggles along his week. So we're gonna have to hear about those. And uh, yeah, it was my daughter's 22nd birthday um, yesterday, so that was kind of crazy. Um, that really kind of hit home. I was like, whoa, wait a minute here. 22. How did, How did that happen? Like, I'm still 22, aren't I? Like, come on. I don't feel like I'm, I'm like, old enough to have a 22-year-old. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, we uh, – actually, and she was traveling. She's traveling across the, across the country. Um, she's on her way to um, Seattle, and uh, she, uh, she left New York, what, two days ago now. So, yeah, they're towing a car. They got a dog with them. They're, they're uh, a German <laughs> shepherd. And uh, they're finding hotels that will allow a dog. And, uh, yeah, and they're actually going to Mount Rushmore today, I believe, So uh, in their travels. So, anyway, um, enough about that. Uh, what's up, Chris? How is everything going with you? And also, Dom, I want to hear a little bit what's been going on with you. And I know we got a bunch of stuff to tackle, Prime Day stuff, some stuff that we've been dealing with. And then also, I've got a, if we got time, I want to do a little hot seat with all three of us. Well, let's kind of let's kind of get it rolling then, guys. Let us know that you can hear us. That's kind of the first order of business. I know there's a whole bunch of you guys on with us right now, but if you can't hear us, then it's kind of pointless for us. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. If you can do that. If you know somebody that might benefit from hanging out with us today, go ahead and share that out to them as well, and that will let us know that you can hear us. Looks like we do have a couple people in the house. Michael Blair wanted you to know, Scott, that I guess there's an issue with today's episode on Spotify. I know on Google Play it works perfectly fine. On Spotify, I guess it's just kind of buzzy noise. Um, really? So hmm. it sounds like it, it's weird because it's pulling from the same feed, but that may be something we want to look at. And I heard uh, I heard Mr. Armstrong on the podcast this morning as well from the sound of it. I listened. Did to you that. hear that? Yeah. Yeah, that was one of our snippets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. I've got a bunch more to do, and that's going to be a, kind of like a new ongoing thing, I think. Whenever I have someone on, I'm going to go ahead and um, – and I'm going to, you know, try to get a little sound clip of where people are from and where they're tuning in from. So, they, yeah, that'll be fun. It, it was fun uh, for sure. And the Armstrongs had, actually had a pretty good update, which if we have time, we could, we could talk about that. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, Dom, how's everything going in, you know, over in your neck of the woods? I know you're – I think you're at the cottage now, at the cottage, um, at, the, uh, at the summer – the summer camp, uh, I, it's not really a camp, but you know what I mean, like you're in summer camp or whatever. You're in summer mode. How's things going, man? We got on. We got on mute, you brother. Yeah, Mister, Mister. There we go. Doing it again. There we go. Hey, it wouldn't be. Yeah. It wouldn't be authentic if we didn't do that. That's true. Uh, yeah, everything's going all right. You know, just the uh, same old, same old. Uh, yeah, I'm down at my cottage for sure. Every uh, day after work, go down there and jump in the hot tub and walk my dog and get some more uh, steps in. That's my nice. routine after work. But uh, yeah, Love just it. dealing with a couple of things. Just dealing with some freight that's in California right now, and apparently that freight company is uh amazon turned them away so i have to foot the bill to get it back from amazon to the freight company so i tried to contact amazon before this but i couldn't get a full answer nobody could really help so i've never heard that amazon cancels appointments so if anybody is out there i've never had an appointment canceled ever and then they told them their next our next delivery date was like at 1 a.m they said well we don't deliver at 1 a.m i get that and then apparently they tried to schedule on july 4th Oh, so I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's Amazon or it's my freight forwarder company making it. A, anyways, whatever. It's a four hundred dollar fee plus ten twenty plus ten dollars a day or twenty dollars a day, and it's been there ten days waiting. So that's another two hundred, six hundred bucks US. I mean, my freight was only twelve hundred <laughs> from China, so uh, it's been nothing but complications trying to get it from California to from uh, from China to California. It used to be nice and easy when I brought it to you know closer to home to right. my freight forwarder than Amazon would pick it up. It was so much easier, but I wanted a little more seamless, but I think I might have to go back because this is just being a pain. Wow. So anyway, so the $600 bill, $600 bill they want. I said, okay, I'll give you my credit card. Oh no, we're only take wire transfer. Oh, I mean, come on. Who doesn't take oh, credit uh -huh. card? 
<laughs> so they're like, no, sorry, we don't take this. So uh, go, I said, you know, in Canada, we have something called e-transfer. I can just, you give me your email and I'll just deposit your account. But I guess you guys maybe don't have that over there. Not all the states do. So now he says, okay, go, once you get the wire transfer, uh, you know, we'll, sh we'll let the goods go. I'm like, well, you want it today, which is not going to happen. And it has to ship Monday. What are we going to do here? So the fi they finally wow. said, they finally said, okay, uh, get it done. Send us a photocopy or an email copy of, of your transfer from your bank. And then we'll consider that, that it's on its way. Really? Oh, wow. Oh man! Wow, that is and I called a yeah, and I, I called a couple uh, freight forwarding companies just for fun. The, I know that uh, you had a couple guests on one that mentioned uh, one in the podcast, so I called them. But for for big freight, it's way too expensive. You know, they want five dollars to check in each box, and it's three dollars if you have a container, and the container costs you six hundred plus it's three hundred dollars for their fee. That's not including the fee to get it from China to their warehouse. So. You know, something that would cost me twelve hundred is going to be like twenty five hundred. So that's not going to save me mm. any time or money. So that's the dilemmas you do when you have to send in stuff in uh, from a different country, I guess. But I, I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess. Even if you're from the U.S., if you're sending it direct, you're still going right. to have those type of problems. Yeah. No. I mean, and again, I I kind of wrote about that in my email this week. It's like, you know, it's not all glitz and glamour, right? I mean, there's no. there's these you know struggles. Is Scott still and, with us? Yeah. Oh, yeah here. Scott's here. Yeah. So I can't hear him all of a sudden. Well, let's see oh, if I you can, can see him. me on the feed. I can see myself on the feed. So, Chris, yeah. maybe you just can't see me. I don't want you to see me, Chris. All right, mm -hmm. hang on a second. I can hear you and see you. Yeah, you're good on this side. I'm going to I'm gonna refresh it, and it might drop off for a second. Yeah, I'm still there, Chris. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm even looking at the live feed. It's still there. Chris you can is hear gone. me, Scott. Can I think Chris me? is. Ha I think Chris is having the problem. Yeah, I can. That's what, yeah, I can. We're good. You can hear me. Yeah, well, we can good. hear you and see you. And we were. We we're still live, Chris. Down, you just dropped off. I couldn't hear you. Yeah. Nice. I think you're just. I think it's that weird little connection you got over there. We had problems yesterday too with you coming on and off. You might have to have that looked at. Oh, you know, you're moving. My 200 meg internet connection that is like five <laughs> apparently. Uh, <laughs> um, Ali says he can't hear Chris. I think that was from before. It looks like you're back. Okay. Um, I'm just going to talk, and if no one can hear me, then they'll keep yelling at me in the chat. Um, so, Scott, do you want to dive in? Because it sounds like Dom, Dom's having some issues with inventory, and just kind of an update on our story from last week is very similar. You know, we had that product that we sold a couple hundred units of last Thursday, and I had a heart attack when I looked at the comparative sales, because I do that once a week, and I was like, yeah. oh, man, we're way down this week, forgetting that we sold a couple hundred units of that product last Thursday. Uh <laughs> We yeah. had that go out of stock last Thursday. We had a shipment going into Amazon. The listing vanished from the Amazon catalog, if you guys haven't heard this story. We contacted the catalog team. They reinstated the listing. But when they reinstated the listing, they did it incorrectly. Hey, Chris, hold on a minute. People are saying that you're on a huge delay. So I think it's your, your connection. Maybe you drop off and come back in. And we'll keep talking. Um, yeah, so basically what Chris was saying, what, what Chris was saying is we, we had all kinds of issues this week. We ran out of inventory. Oh, when was that now? It's got to be like five to seven days ago. We ran out of inventory. We did a, a great promotion. It worked really well. We ran out of inventory. And then when we got back in inventory, or when we sent in inventory, um, our, well, when we started sending in the inventory, our listing disappeared. When the listing disappeared, we contacted Amazon. Amazon had said, all right, let's look into this. Chris spent about three hours on the phone with them, emailing back and forth. Long story short, they ended up creating three separate listings to try to fix it. <laughs> three separate listings. So now we've got three listings. One of them has like one review. One of them has no reviews. And one of them has like 14 reviews. Right. And, and it, it basically... It chopped it all up trying to figure out where to put it. So they just kept duplicating the listing. Um, now, this morning, Chris, I looked, and it looks like part of the inventory is in on, on the original listing, okay? But the one that they issued now that said that it would be available on July 11th. So we've got, like, all kinds of things happening here. Um, we're losing sales. Um, as we speak, about, about six thousand dollars based on our velocity too. Which yeah, is. yeah. So you know we're losing all that stuff. Um, I think we still had a pretty decent BSR, even though we were out of stock for so long. 
Um, I think it was at least 30 or 40,000, um, which you would think if you run out of inventory, you're going to be up in the hundred thousand. Um, so it wasn't terrible. And I thought, you know, once we get in, we're going to be able to ramp it back up again, turn paper click back on and, and, uh, maybe even just do another slight little promotion, but chaos as far as the listing goes. And it's still not right. It's still not like where we can see one listing. We see like three listings that were duplicated. Two of them have the same ace and one of them they created uh, or I'm sorry, two of them, they created like these, these random ASINs. And then you've got another one that's the original ASIN. So, so did, did you and I talk through this at all? I know we kind of had a quick update. Basically what happened is the catalog team deleted the wrong listing when they, when they recreated, <laughs> right? Because we had inventory in, on its way in, it got disassociated. So we had disassociated inventory. Right. On top of that, for whatever reason, and just a, a point to check for everybody, we were using the ASIN as the FNSKU and it was getting checked in because we're brand registered. So they just assumed that that was our barcode. Right. And instead of printing the FNSKU on the product like we have for every other thing, it was just a mental lapse when we set up the product. This is why you don't watch six products in six weeks because then you don't have, the, <laughs> you don't have those issues. So that kind of compounded everything because if we would have been using the FNSKU, when they scanned it, it would have put it on the new listing. But because we weren't doing that, they had to recreate the old listing with the old ASIN so that mm. when they scanned it, it would show up for something. So in theory, when they finished scanning in the other 200 units that are sitting there, because right now they checked in like 40 out of 300 that we sent in, it will put those 300 on that old listing and they're then going to merge those three listings back. But why we have three listings to begin with is a totally different thing. Like two, I get the third one. I don't understand why that's there and it's basically irrelevant, but they've told me on three different occasions now on the phone and via email that they're going to merge all three of them. We're not going to lose any reviews. We're not going to lose the sales history and any of those kinds of things. But the longer we're out of stock, the harder it's going to be to get back. Yeah. So yeah. we may have to be a little more aggressive when we get back in stock than we would have otherwise. Cause originally we were going to be out of stock for two days. Yeah. That inventory has been sitting in the Charlotte warehouse for over a week now, mm -hmm. not associated to anything. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I, I actually emailed them this morning. I'm hoping they get the rest of that inventory checked in so that we can have inventory like tomorrow. But and Chris, what I notice is, is that we've got 47 units that are available on the original listing now but we can't do anything until they check in the other 240 something. Right. Right. And so I followed up with them this morning and asked for a status update. I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, and when I called them this morning, they were just like, we'll tell you when we tell you, but they said 24 hours yesterday. It's of now course. been, you know, 30, it's always 24 or 48 hours. Right. Um, and so it, it can't hurt to kind of follow up on that. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not terribly worried about it at this point. It's frustrating to lose the velocity, it's extremely frustrating to lose the money. But we're going to have inventory for Prime Day. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, here's the... At this point. Here, here's the other thing, though, that I've noticed. Because we kind of really... We sold a lot of units quickly. Um, I'm still finding that we're ranking pretty decently for a really high-level keyword, um, which is kind of cool because when we do get back in, hopefully in the next day or so, we can start ramping up. The other cool thing is, is with the other product that we have, which we're having a problem with pay-per-click because we can't we can't even show up for our main keyword for some reason. We're trying to figure that out. The one that did go out of inventory with one click, I could, I could get that campaign back up and running and I'll be on page one in my sponsored product ads because that one was working really well. So that's the positive note. The, the, the downside of that is why the heck can't we get, um, why can't we get our keyword or our product to show up for the keyword that we're showing up for on our other listings that is basically the same family. You want to hear something funny? Yeah, I do. Make uh, me laugh. I just searched for the main product that it's associated with plus the two word keyword that we've been using for this. Yeah. Uh, and we have two separate listings that rank number one and number two. <laughs> one is $22 and one is $19. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so they even changed the price. <laughs> and one has, one has 14 reviews and the other one has fewer than that. But that's the other thing that's funny is like, as we've been going through this process, we're actually getting reviews on both the old ASIN. That is weird. Because that is they have just... two separate listings. And I'm trying to figure out 
like that other ASIN should not show up anywhere. Mm. And the price that's listed in the back end is not the price that shows up in the front end. So mm. I'm curious if we actually sell one or two today. Um, just just because we are starting to rank for the old ASIN that has 47 units associated with it. Mm. I, I just, I'm yeah, I, again, and kind of going back to like, again, I mean, maybe Dom can shed some light on this. And again, I mean, right now, it's just frustrating because we are basically in the same category. We're able to, on two listings, I can turn my pay-per-click on and I'm in position one. With this other one, I can't. I can't. It just it just won't happen. And I'll turn the other ones off so I know that whole thing, right? Like you don't want to maybe turn them off so that way they're, they're not going to get it because they had better sales velocity or they had better conversions. I get that. So I'm saying we're turning that stuff off and we're just going to try to get this one to get seen and it's it seems like it's impossible. So here's a question and the answer may be that we just hold off on it, but we have there's now 70 checked in under the original ASIN. But that's on the product that we can get ranked for. That's that's the one that's actually ranking number 1 for that keyword that we were just talking about. Exactly. So do we take the chance of turning PPC back on and trying to get sales velocity there? Or do we wait till it's checked in and, and everything's reorganized, which is going to be another two or three days? Well, I, I think that's fine, but it still doesn't help with the problem with the one product that's not being able to get seen. You know what I mean? Like from... Well, but that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking strategy on the one that we know will rank. Yeah. Do we turn PPC back on for that because mm. we have 70 in stock? Mm and try to sell through some of those just to make up for the lost revenue, or should we just hold off on it mm. until Amazon sorts everything out on the back end? Yeah, um, I don't know. I, at this point, I would probably wait until tomorrow, and then maybe we'll turn it back on tomorrow. Okay, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Because I'm curious, I, I actually just went and matched the prices between the two. Oh, did you? I'm curious if we sell some today just through organic, because both of those listings show up now. Now, one of them isn't going to be in stock until Prime Day, and the other one, the one with more reviews, is in stock right now, so people can buy it. So I'm curious if that one will rank for some keywords for us, and if that translates into some sales. Dom, what's your thoughts on that? I wish Susan Lucci was here with us, because <laughs> FBA is our lives. This is what it sounds like over here. Holy the days dear. of our FBA lives. Oh, wait, for <laughs> Susan Lucci, Tom Sugar, Scott Hooker. And Chris Schaefer. <laughs> this one. Eye patch. Do you want to put an eye patch? He was my twin brother. He's the one that screwed up the listing. It was his fault. <laughs> That's right. I've been sabotaged. <laughs> we can meet. Let's meet down by the pier. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we always meet down by the pier like at three in the morning. That's right. Uh, you could do that? Yeah, you can. So, what do you uh, think, man? I think it's a big uh, cluster F, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, really I mean, I don't know. You take advantage of it if they give you two listings for the price of one. That's pretty good. That's a good scam. That's yeah, a, right. all, all that is. All that is is cross contamination on your category. I mean, that's basically what's happened. They listed it twice. They'll take. They'll they'll get rid of one of those for sure or amalgamate them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's going to get some time. As far as the keyword thing, the only problem I've ever had with that situation is that. Although I was relevant for that keyword in that category, Amazon decided to change it. Mm -hmm. So I would check your competitors for that product and see if they're all in the same category. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes it just happens that way, and that, that's why I had to we had to relaunch in the other category so we could be relevant for that. Keyword. So yeah, and I, and I was going to so, say, I mean, that might be even something just to play with anyway. Just maybe change the category just to mix it up and get it kind of like reset. Well, I mean, first I would check your competitors, see where they are, and you might go, oh, they're not in this category. I see, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Like you might think that that's the main category, but Amazon doesn't think so. Neither does – so that's one thing. Two, because of – obviously, because of the product that it is, the main keyword, it uh, – did you try taking it out? Obviously, you took it out of your title. Yep. You yep. tried taking it out of your bullet. How about the back end too? No, the back end and I did. The key, yeah, back end that. is still there. Yeah. That, I mean, that was my next know, thing. I mean, yeah. We all know that, I mean, again, it's not readily talked about. We don't talk about it. It's against terms of service. Again, it's a great area. 
to put a competitor or a main brand's name in your keyword search. It is look it up. I know for sure it is. Yeah, but it's, I, it's I mean, not even it's not even just that one though. There's other there's other ones. Yeah, that yeah, are, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that are close, yeah. but they're not. You know what I mean? So I don't know. No, I'd be talking to somebody. Like I mean, I'd be on the just phone to every day. Yeah, yeah. Generic ways. Yeah, yeah. Generic ways of yeah, yeah. Describing it. Of course. Yeah. yeah, I get that. I mean, if you call a PPC specialist and talk to them in the U.S., obviously. It'll, I mean, they could maybe help you a little bit. That's what I've done before. And they've told me this is, that's why I knew they, they said, look, you can't use this in your back and you know, your keywords. So I took it out and then it's not in your title, take it out. And then eventually I would rank relevant like about an hour later, right? When I changed mm. it, which is awkward, but that's just the way they block your, your product. Or maybe they just picked, picked that specific product and said, you can't use these keywords for mm. this product. Nobody can. But the problem is when you type in that keyword, your competitors are showing up too. Yeah. Yep, all yeah, of them. So see, it's, it's yeah, see, it's a listing thing. Then it's got nothing to do with the category or the keyword. Then it's something to do with your ASIN itself. Then mm. because if all your competitors are showing up, oh yeah, they all why are. they like to? Yeah, unless unless they're in a different category, that's the only other way. Mm. Unless you check, I would check two or three of them and see what their category, their BSR is in, and go from there. If they're in the same, then you know that there's an issue with your listing, and then you you spend your whole next three days on the weekend. Forget about hanging out with your kids and your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you have them on hold until you figure it out. You know, that's yeah, it's, what I would it's pretty. Do. It's pretty frustrating. Um, although I am noticing something right now, Chris. Um, as we're going here through this, let me look at something really quick. Um, I'm gonna go in there right now. And you still there, guys? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Man, that's strange. I just can't. Out. I just came back in the lobby. Am I here? Hello. What is? <laughs> back in the lobby. There he is. I heard. I heard Dom drop off. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll check on the categories. Um, I think we are, but there's another category we could probably go in that could be considered a, a category yeah. it could be found in. Just um, the and you could do category. that. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm thinking. Really cool. Yeah, and and uh, I yeah. like that idea because you and I had a conversation and a thought earlier in the week. You know, we have other products that are in that same subcategory. So it's not yep. going to show multiple things, but when we paused it, it still didn't show. But no. if we switch it to the main category, which quite honestly is probably where it should be anyway, mm. because I think you're going to sell as many generically as yeah. you do for the niche mm. or the niche. If niche. You niche. Yeah. If you will. Um, I mean, what you I think you're going to sell just as many either place. I do too. Honestly. I do too. So, I, I, to me, I don't know that the specific subcategory matters as yeah. long as we can get PVC traction somewhere. Somewhere, to right. Figure out yeah. how to rank for the other keywords. Yep. So. I mean, you could, you, Scott, you could also, like, you're to just cross contaminate, call them up, tell them you want your subcategory to move to the other category, keep your main yep. in whatever category you're in. And then and if it's in, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, right? Just cross contaminate yep. it yep. As, long, as long as you're in a relevant category. Oh, it, it, it'll still be higher, relevant. It'll still be you know? 100% relevant. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it'll catch on that one. You'll know within a couple hours. Like yeah. it doesn't happen right away because it's going to take, take a full day before your your listing changes over to there. And then the next by the next day, you should know PPC again. You could test it. Just leave that one category open, mm -hmm. like that one campaign overnight. And you'll know the catches. Yeah. So. The, the strange thing is, and I'm just gonna I'm checking that on the fly here too. The strange thing is that um, for for the main keyword and then. Adding an extension to it, we have been seen in some of the sponsored product ads. Does that make sense? So what is it again? Your, your, so your long tail? So let's say that I can't rank for garlic press. Yeah. But I can rank for garlic press accessories. So for some long tail keywords, you can yep. rank, but some you can't. Yep. But it uses the main keyword in the long tail. Yep. It, it still has the main keyword in the long tail. Yep. I don't know. Yep, and I and I and I can get sponsored ads for that. Yeah. <laughs> now it, is that okay? So let me that keyword the, the, that you're not ranking for the keyword. Yeah. Was that the account? Was that the item that got hit? Yeah. With the violation yeah. for the okay. Yeah. That's why. Okay. That's okay. your problem there. Just so what's happening is they're saying you type in that keyword, not going to show relevancy because of your title issue. But well, I, I thought we, I thought we, I thought we rectified that with them, Chris. And so you got to uh, talk to PPC guy. Yeah. Yeah. He'll tell you. That's what you got to keep doing. Someone will unlock it. Been yeah. That's what it's all. I mean, it yeah. doesn't make any issue. So you're using the same keyword, in, the main keyword inside a long tail keyword, yep. but not all long tail keywords exactly. work or the main keyword doesn't work. So that's yep. what it is. Yep. 
they basically blocked you to use those keywords. Yep. Yep. Because of your title thing. Yep. You can use it on the other one because you didn't get violations on your other titles, right? Right. Well, the long tail. Yeah, but you, but the other the other products you didn't get violation no. on your title. So no. They didn't say okay. No. Well, there you go. There's your there's basically well your answer. You know exactly. So they whatever well, the, the it is are, it, they, it is. But the problem is is like Chris said, we've been told that that everything has been basically yeah. unflagged, if you will. Yeah, you get that all the time. You know. You know. I'll believe it. Trust me. I've been told a million. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm still waiting for for a refund for something from three weeks ago. It takes forever unless you're on them all the time because they like, oh, yeah, that's fixed. Yeah, thanks, but mm. Yeah, thanks, sure. Um, all right, all right. I don't want to spend the whole time on our problems here, um, but um, let me just kind of remind everyone, if you guys are just joining us, um, if you guys have any questions, you guys want to talk about Prime Day, you want to talk about anything um, that you might be struggling with right now, put it. Put the questions, the comments in the chat or in the, in the comments area because we're on Facebook. Um, put them in there. We'll do our best to, uh, to to try to answer some of those. Do us a favor as well. Um, if you have the option to share this, share it, please. Like it. Send some of that emoji love going across there or whatever the heck it is. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, think mean, I think you mean smiley face, thumbs up, yeah. Mr. Yuck. That's what you yeah, mean. That, that's, that's what I mean. And any of those guys. Um, yeah, so Chris, what else did you want to dive into? I know you wanted to talk about Prime Day. Really, really quickly, I got a funny story. Um, we had a great conversation with Jason. Um, you and I had a conversation with Jason from Seller Summit when, when we, and he's got a big company that he runs and, and manages and takes care of all their Amazon sales. And he sent me over after we talked, he goes, he sent me over, I guess Amazon is sending its sellers. I don't know. I didn't look at my email to, to see if it was, if I actually got one, but they're sending a PDF document on how to better sell for Prime Day. And a lot of that is stuff that we're talking about, building an email list and sending e an email to, out to your audience and, and reminding them that there's a special sale. And, and there's a whole PDF. It's like a 10 or a 12 page PDF document that's like a special report. And it's, it's just comical because this is stuff that we've been talking about forever. It's funny. It cracks me up a little bit because it reminds me of like the stuff in the internet marketing world, like the affiliate launch package that you would send out. And that's really what they're doing. They're like, hey, if you have any traffic that you can drive to Amazon, drive it to Amazon for Prime Day, man. Like, get us as much traffic as possible. Yeah. And that's how you sell more. No, that's how Amazon sells more. Yeah. But it's also how you sell more if you're smart about it. Uh, so that conversation was great. And I know he's on here with us today. I oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just seen Jason said, thanks for the shout out. Yeah, actually, I'm looking at the doc right now. It says Prime Day Communications Toolkit. And it's a nice PDF, by the way. They've sent out three, two or three emails that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, and it's got a table of contents that says, what is Prime Day? What is Prime Day Communications Toolkit? Image guidance, sample email content, and best practices, social media best practices, Facebook content, Twitter posts. What else can I do? Like all of these things. And I think it's just, it's funny um, that uh, they're kind of going over like the basic stuff. Um, but we've been talking about that stuff. So guys, if you guys have been following the podcast and stuff we've been talking about, you guys are ahead of the curve. I mean, it's, we're, we're, we're way beyond what they're, they're telling you to do. Um, it's the it's the basic stuff too. Basically, if you have an audience, which you should be building an audience, and you have a list, start getting them warmed up and ready to buy on Prime Day. That's what they want you to do. And of course they want you to do it because they're going to drive more sales for Prime Day for them. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. So Daniel said he's had several Amazon reps reach out to discuss Prime Day strategies. They're pushing really hard. And they are because they want it to be bigger than last year, right? Which sure. is why they, they extended it to, what is it, 9 p.m. Eastern on the 10th. Right, right. To pick up that extra chunk of hours, right, so that they're not just wasting the first six hours of the day because nobody that buys is awake, right? <laughs> so right. They're, they're kind of adding a few hours back in by doing that same thing. Uh, Abel wants to know: Have you guys gone over Amazon giveaways? Yeah, Abel, we've talked about them a little bit in the past. I've done it just to test it. It's not something that is extremely beneficial in my opinion because you still have to do all of the marketing behind it and you don't get anything out of it other than a little bit of traffic to the listing. You'd be much better off using the giveaway strategy that we've talked about in the past. And you can find that at the amazing teller.com forward slash build list. We'll go through that. It's actually a giveaway you do on your own site. One of the things, one of the tricks that Amazon has added to that giveaways feature inside of Amazon since the last time we talked about it is you can actually give a percentage off uh, for anybody who doesn't win the grand prize. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool, but it's not as effective as hitting them with that email when you're ready to do that, at least in my opinion, because if they're just in it for the free thing, then they're not going to do that. So you, you lose a little bit of that effectiveness. Um, 
So I, I would check out theamazingseller.com slash build list. I've used Amazon giveaways for a couple different things, but they don't let you really get a social following out of it. I think you right. do Twitter followers. Twitter, yeah, you do Twitter followers, I think, which are kind of me useless. And so if, if you're trying to start a YouTube channel, it wasn't a bad thing. Like I think we had the first product we tried, uh, we set it to whatever the maximum number of people is. So let's just say one in 1,000, right? Yeah. Yeah. One person out of 1,000 people that hit that giveaway are going to get the prize, but they had to watch a YouTube video. We were able to drive 990 views just because of how it worked out, right? The 991st person got it, but you might only drive one view. We drove almost 1,000 views, and that kind of pushed the video forward into the YouTube algorithm because we did it pretty quickly. But we could also just send an email to our list, which is traffic that we own, and do the same thing. And I would much rather own the traffic source than rely on Amazon. Does that make sense, Scott? Yeah. I would rather own the traffic and be able to point that fire hose wherever I want it to go rather than rely on Amazon to, to do that for me, which they're not really going to do. So, Cool. Um, all right, where do you want to go from here? I can, uh, I can, we can do that little hot seat if you want. We can all kind of jump in and talk about um, a college student here that's doing some pretty cool things. <clears throat> what else would you have on the agenda? Let's do that. You want to do that? Yeah. You can do that? You can. You can do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got an email um, from uh, one of our listeners, and uh, the, the title was kind of cool that he sent me. The subject uh, of the email says, college student on track for 100000 plus in first year. Thank you. And um, just says, hey, Scott, just wanted to reach out. His name is Benjamin, by the way. Benjamin Lynch. Says, hey, Scott, just wanted to reach out and say thanks for all you do. I'm a full-time college student. Started my business in September 2016. I began with a test order of 500 units, and I uh, was sold out completely by December 15th. Um, I'm on target to have over $100,000 in sales just with this product. I have just launched another product, so hopefully that number will be $200,000 plus soon. I'm uh, at the point where I wanted to continue to grow, but I'm, I have various options that I'm considering to pursue. I feel like I'm not moving fast enough, so I have just placed uh, a sample order for my third product. I thought this could be a production while I, or I could be at production while I grow product number two. Basically, I can't figure out if I should just spend all my time getting reviews and sales for my new product or if I should also be building my list at the same time and maybe launching in Canada, Europe, or even on Jet. In short, I feel like I have taken action, like you say, to get where I am, but I feel stuck on what uh, plan I should do now. I feel that I accomplished that most of what I can set out to do in a one to two month plan, objections or objectives, um, such as having an email list built. So I'm hoping you could give me a little guidance. I definitely have uh, to thank you for everything, and I never would have gotten started without your help. Thanks so much. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was the email. I, I sent an email back saying, sounds like you're doing a great job. I need a little more detail. Are you trying to build a brand? Are you doing an open brand? Like, what, what are you doing? And then he did respond back, which we can read a little bit of that if you want. But what's your first take on that, Chris? So the, I guess the main question there was, should he focus on building the list or should he focus on driving sales and reviews? That was the main ask there. Yeah, well, because, you know, like, again, like we, we, you know, kind of like us, like we've got more than one product now. So what do we do? Do we focus on one really hard or do we mix it up and kind of spread it out or do we, you know, start doing fourth product? Well, and that, so, so my question is, and I may have missed it in the email, it, he, he has product three in production, right? Yep. Product one and two, are those already up and selling? Yeah, one is already selling well, and uh, number two is on its way to, to be selling well. So for yeah. me, I would say focus that time on two things. One, pushing product two forward so that it's rooted right. and building that list so that you can launch product three the second that it comes out. Now, I'm assuming all of those are related from the sound of it. Yep, they are, and that, that was my question that I emailed him back. He wants to build a brand. So if you're trying brand. to build a brand, that list, and for the exact reason that I just said five minutes ago, that list is where I would focus the rest of that time. Because product two is already on Amazon, you're not really going to be doing a ton to drive that forward right now. You're going to be testing and tweaking PPC and scaling some of those things. That doesn't take a ton of time unless you're Dom and you like to do that all day, every day, right? <laughs> I don't. I like to sit and let it wait, right? So if you're doing that, that saves you a little bit of time the rest of the day. And I don't know, I mean, you're a college kid. I'm assuming you're not taking summer classes. You might be, but you have some time in the day, you know, when you get up at 1230. And <laughs> it sounds like this kid's a different, different kid than a regular student at college. Um, to be um, able to launch a product yeah. and do all yeah. that he's done is pretty, pretty remarkable. But if, you have, if you have even only an hour or two a day, you yeah. can do both of those things, right? You can take a look at PPC. 
and you can start to build your list, especially if you're using the giveaway strategy that we've talked about in the past and that we talk about on amazingseller.com slash build list, right? Because once that's up, all you're doing then is testing and tweaking right. either Facebook ads or reaching out to some influencers and waiting for them to respond. So it really only takes an hour or two a day to do both of those things. Right. Now, I wouldn't go get product resourced and, and start working on product four until you have that list and you get product three up and launched. But I would start with Amazon PPC, get product two, a few more sales a day, and then start to build that list so that when product three comes, I'm ready to launch it. Now, the other upside of building that list is if product one trips or product two falters a little bit, you can turn that fire hose of traffic right back around to either one of those two products or product three gets delayed, right? It's mm. in production. Production delays happen. Stuff gets stuck in the port. Stuff gets you know uh, sent into Amazon, and they delete your listing. Stuff mm. happens, right? So oh, yeah. if you have an extra few days, you can always point them back to product one or two. Now that you've had them rooted, you can kind of move them up the page and continue to bring in some sales. So okay, those- what I want to ask Dom is you know because he mentioned like the foreign markets, like so. What's your thoughts on that, Dom? He's got a lot of things going on. That's an opportunity we all have. Um, Jet, you know, Walmart, whatever. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would, I would suggest not to do that, especially if you just started. You already got lots of good momentum with your first product, so take that into your second and third, and we'll focus on Amazon.com. There's, I don't know why people want to go outside of it for now. People are just, I don't know. People are excited, or they, you know, they, they want to expand faster than it's possible sometimes. So I think, I think especially if he's all by himself, you know, unless he's got the bandwidth to do it, you know, but. I would suggest, you know, one product, Amazon, you could release a hundred products in amazon.com versus two here, two there and all the markets. So there's nowhere near the capacity. Again, once you have the infrastructure all set up, uh, you know, the, the rotation of stock and all that stuff done, and then you can start implementing these other countries. Makes it a lot easier, right? But he's going to learn. He's got one product. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't gone through all the hiccups and bumps that's going to happen, which you'll find out in the second and third and fourth product. Right. And so forth. So, again, and the products that he sells might not work in some other countries. Mm, uh, that's true. The type of product it is. So it's it's absolutely too much true. Of, I just think you're taking way too much bandwidth just, just to figure out the freight forwarding and the taxes and all that stuff and the bank accounts and you know it's just like a you know it's, you need another person to do that or you have to be really experienced already going into this because you you did it full time for another company or something like that. But I would suggest yeah. just. I'm sorry, one, the second product is not even launched yet. You have to worry about that. Third product is not even made yet. So I think that's a lot for one person to handle. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, I think it's awesome that they have all of, you know, that he has all of these things that he wants to do or that he wants to try. But sometimes those, you know, when you have so many things, you don't, really focus and get good at the one thing or the few things that you can do. And I, I don't I don't think that you've really tapped, you know, into dot com as much as you could. And I just think it gets even more complicated the minute that you start adding in another channel too quickly. Um, so my advice is going to be very similar to what these guys, uh, you know, had just said is like really focus on that one product and really getting that rooted. Really getting it, you know, like get the authority built on your account, your seller's account, all of that stuff. Worry about good feedback and, and reviews and all that stuff. Um, start getting the pay-per-click dialed in. And I know, Dom, you talk about this a lot. It's like you're really getting yourself ready for the big game, right, or the big day. And that could be, in this case, maybe Prime Day or maybe it's going to be Black Friday or maybe it's going to be fourth quarter. Like you're, you're kind of prepping for the big the big traffic rush when we do have it. So that's why I think, you know, focusing on the products that you currently have and really you know, not just launching them and then forgetting about them and going on to the next and the next and the next. Um, because again, I mean, we're experiencing it right now. How much of your ad spend do you put on all the products? Like it's going to get really expensive really fast. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like us right now, like, I mean, I'm going through anywhere between 150 to $200 a day trying to get myself ranked, right? So do that for, you know, six products each. You're talking $1,200 a day. So what we're doing is we're like focusing on the ones that we want to spend the time on until we start seeing some ranking and some start seeing some regular sales. And then we move over to the next one. And then we they take the ad budget. We focus on that one. Um, so this way here, we can really focus and concentrate on that. Um, and that's what we've done. And, and so far, it's working really well, except for the product that for some reason, we're kind of like blacklisted on this, uh, on one of our main keywords. Um, if that wasn't the case, my, my ad budget right now is it would be directed to that product and start pushing that one because the other two are me. I'm, I'm already showing up on page one for a lot of 
uh, popular keywords. And we're selling, we're selling, we're hitting our sales goals on those other two and we're not. Yeah, for the most part. Them. Yeah, as long as we're in stock, we are. Yeah. <laughs> as, long as, as long as we don't have multiple listings. Frank says, you know, it only takes one glitch that takes up all your time to crash that whole effort when you're spread out. And yeah. to, yeah, totally. You and I have talked about this in the past and I think we heard it at Funnel Hacking Live. The stack got thrown out that every time you add a SKU, it complicates your business 12%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? So when you add that third product, you add 12% of complexity back to your business, right? Yep. But to me, when you add a marketplace, oh, when yeah. you go to .co.uk, it's 50 or 100% yeah. more complex because you're now dealing with trying to rank in two separate ecosystems. You're trying to deal with VAT and shipping to England and all of the things that you have to do there versus focusing on growing here. Once you have this base set, then you can worry about those things. And I think Dom brought, brought the point up brilliantly. Like once you've gotten established and once you've built that trust and that authority, right? Once you have an accountant that can handle that stuff for you, then worry about doing .ca, .mx, .co.uk, .jp, right? The other thing is, and it's something that Dom talks about all the time, the, the exponential sales that you'll see is not the same, right? Right. It's, hey, you might sell three for every 10 you sell in the US. Well, I could just launch another product in the US that sells 10, and complicate it 12% versus 100%. Does that make right. sense? Well, what's, yeah. yeah, what's gonna happen with Jason, what's gonna happen too is he doesn't know it now, but he, what the financial commitment's gonna be very tough at fourth quarter, because now he's doing 150,000. That product's gonna run out before fourth quarter. He's gonna have to reorder that. The second product's gonna sell through a little bit, and he's gonna have to pay for the third product. If he starts splitting orders and stuff, he's gonna have to order twice as much. And, so now you you know you you're going from maybe spending five thousand to ten thousand dollars, or from ten to twenty thousand, and again the the risk reward can be there, but at the beginning it's just nothing that you should have to deal with. I mean anybody could do one hundred fifty thousand already should be happy that they're doing that right away, oh, yeah. right? So yeah, that that's yeah, yeah. the first that's the first win, and just keep on that momentum. Stick at three products, get your second one in. Again, you know you guys are having difficulties with five to six products, but you, we have a team of five, six, seven people. Right, you know, and it's difficult. So for one person, it's even more. Now again, mm. I we don't know. I don't know. His, we don't know his product. We don't know how many. Maybe he's only you. You know, he's selling buying a hundred units at thirty dollars each. So maybe I think he said five hundred. I think he said five hundred. Yeah. So five hundred at ten bucks is five thousand. At five bucks is twenty five. So I mean, there's still a commitment if you have to buy for mm. two different countries. And again, the sell through is not going to be worth it. I mean, Chris just said it. I've always been a proponent. I'm in Canada. I don't send one thing. A lot of people that send to Canada is because they don't want to try the U.S. Mm -hmm. Right, they don't want to have to deal with the kind of competition and PPC, and we all our products would sell in Canada, probably pretty well too. Again, I'm just you know we're at that place. Maybe I'm just too lazy to go do it, transform and ship it. But I just, I just have no 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 desire because I know how retail art works, the sale wise. I know the threshold. You know, like you said, it's 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 seven to three, nine to one. It's a very low. You know, you'll for every five nine you sell in the U.S., you'll sell one in Canada. So, hmm. or, I mean, it's never going to be fifty fifty. If it was fifty fifty, like five and five, I'd be on it right away. So, again, I'm not saying that's the norm. There are some products that will sell right here if you got salt or snow shovels or you know stuff for for snow machines, anything winterized type stuff. It's going to sell like crazy around here. But you could also sell that in Pennsylvania, in New York, and you know Seattle when the cold. So, even if it's seasonal products, you still have a better chance in the U.S. And then. Once you get through the rotation and you Maybe know, zero. okay, this is how everything works after, then you could just start, you know, yeah. getting into yeah. Canada if you want, or UK. But cool. All right. I rather, you know, I, I, I rather release 50 things in the US than 12 in the US and the same 12 in the UK and same 12 in Canada, you know, because the financial burden is going to be the same. No, no, I, I, I agree. I, I think that, you know, especially if you're just starting and you're just starting to get some momentum, I wouldn't want to break up that momentum and, and go over to a whole other marketplace. That's just me. And that's just us. You know, it doesn't mean that other people aren't doing it. And they're not being, doing it successfully, but understand that it is going to take more bandwidth. You're managing, you know, again, two different lines of, of inventory, all of that stuff. Um, so again, this is just our feedback. Um, all right. So Chris, we've got about 15 more minutes. Let's go ahead and and let's say answer some questions. If you have any questions, if you guys do have questions and you haven't submitted them yet, submit them down below in the comments. We'll go ahead. We'll do our best to answer them. We've got about 15 more minutes um, that we'll hang out here. Um, again, guys, just remember, uh, we're, we're doing these on Friday at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. If you guys want to drop by, just kind of set your alarm so you guys know uh, it's weird that Facebook doesn't really have a good notification system for Facebook lives, which is kind of weird. Um, but maybe they will in the future. Um, but yeah, we've been showing up now for a bunch of weeks. 
So uh, yeah, if you got any questions, let us know. Um, also, do us a favor and share this. Like it. Send some emoji or whatever love out there. Mr. Yuck, thumbs <laughs> Mr. Up. Yuck, thumbs up. Any of those things. Daniel Tejada wants to know, and I know we talked a little bit about it last week. He said, <clears throat> what's your PPC strategy for Prime Day? Spend more on PPC or limit on products not running lightning deals during Prime Day? My kind of take on this is I'm, I think I'm going to pause some of the broad stuff that we're doing and focus on the stuff that I know is going to drive sales, those phrase and exact things. I, I'm still going to let it run, but I'm going to run it in a more limited fashion just because there's going to be a ton of traffic. And I know that anytime there's a ton of traffic, my conversion rate tends to go down, right? Because you have more people who are just looking at stuff, people who are browsing versus buyers. Obviously, you're going to sell more units still, but the conversion rate generally will drop on days like Black Friday and Cyber Monday and those kinds of things because of the influx of traffic. I don't want to spend the budget on that, so I'm going to focus on the things I know that convert. Scott, Dom, do you guys kind of feel the same way or do you have a different opinion on that? I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, we we, 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 we usually spend an extra 20 25% extra on our budget because we work on a percentage all our ppc is 10 percent of what we gross each day so we know we're going to do at least an extra 20 to 25 percent on that day i'm still willing to spend it regardless so so if i'm spending 200 i'm going to spend you know 240 or whatever that day so i'll reset our budgets and and then for new product that's just in there we'll just keep it the same too you're not going to you're not going to it's not going to make a big change to your algorithm for everything if it's a new product it's a couple days old or a week old you know, yeah. one day still going to be because you're not going to rank for anything really there it's going to be still the only way you're going to rank is by you know by showing on ppc so yeah i mean i'm willing to spend it on a regular day now there are probably going to be some keywords i'll turn off because we rank high enough for them do you know what i'm saying so we're like mm -hmm. in the top three already or in the fold and we're just it's going to just take that budget away in an hour so what we'll do is we'll go through and pause the main two or three keywords but we'll leave everything else run so Okay. And that's about it. And then we'll look at pricing. I don't do the competitor thing because we have too many ASINs now. It would take us a full day just to do that. So we'll just kind mm -hmm. of, we'll check a few of our best ones. You know, we kind of know who's going to want to compete against us in each category. Sure. So we'll just go to them and we'll see what they price change. And we might just leave it. Again, for us to discount our price on something we're going to sell tomorrow anyways, the day after Prime Day for regular price, I just don't. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to sell 200 on Prime Day and then 30 on the second day, or or you're going to sell 100 on Prime Day and 100 on the second day. Mm. Like it just it, it evens out after a while. It's just it's a good day to to, to pad your bank and, and move some BSR. But don't forget, everyone else is moving their BSR too, right? Exactly, exactly. So I, I I don't get too hyped about it. It's like Black Friday or our our Boxing Day here in Canada. I mean, we make so much out of it. You know, great. I you know I sold. 1200 units that's amazing i've seen a lot of guys at 185 you know 1800 units 25 that's i mean that's crazy if you're high volume that's amazing versus normal but for regular accounts and stuff like you're not going to go from 100 units to, to 1000 units in one day it's just not going to happen i don't think anyways it's never happened to me so yeah. you know so we just take it as a day i, I just look at it as a, okay that's going to pay for our storage fees in december <laughs> right you know <laughs> that's basically the way i look at it so okay. It's just a cool. regular day, even though your sales are higher. Anyway, I don't know if that's a good outlook, but that's, you know, it just because if you hype yourself up, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Then you go, oh, my God, it's been dead. And I've talked to lots of people where they've only did 20% more, 10% mm. more. Like they sold 50 a day. They sold like 75. You know, is I that worth it changing? I think it's, it's going to vary on, on the product, on the sure. seller and all that stuff. Um, I, yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm thinking of it like it's kind of like, a day where you're able to get a rush of traffic, maybe, and if you do, you can take advantage of that, and and from there you're gonna you're gonna have more sales, which then could lead to more reviews and feedback and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we all know that the more sales that you can get, the the better it's gonna do for your yeah. listing and for for all that stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, well, I, I completely I'm, agree with that. I just like I said, don't forget everybody that's in our space is doing the same course. thing too. Of course, if they have better ranking. They're gonna sell way more than us, so you're never gonna catch them anyways, regardless. Yep. So if you're yep. doing a 50 usually a day and you do 80 or 100, the guy that's selling 80 a day already is going to do 125. So they're always right. going to be ahead of you. Right. So I, I get what you're saying. It's, I, I still get, I, I just don't think it's, I just hear a lot of hype over it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like people just mm -hmm. expect a lot out of this day. Well, I wouldn't more expect, than release I, I wouldn't or, expect a lot and I wouldn't bank on it. I've always said that even with, well, that, like, that's you, what I'm you, hoping, shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't bank on fourth quarter. Right, you shouldn't be like, yeah. oh, I hope I get that Christmas bonus this year. Shouldn't be that make or break. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. I'm saying that 
traditionally there's going to be more traffic. There's going to be more, you know, more buyers buying or willing to buy. And not to mention people that have threw some, or thrown something in their cart are going to be also notified that day that it went down if you, if you reduce your price. So now you can alert those people through an Amazon yeah. channel and then you can you know, boost your sales. Again, I'm just looking at overall sales. That's what we're mm -hmm. after. Like that's gonna no. that's gonna that's gonna help us. Now again, you're right. You've got other sellers. The same thing's gonna happen to them. But here's the deal: if you're kind of like fresh and you're starting and you don't have a lot of competition, well, that's gonna be key for oh, you. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Not a lot. A few, like a couple of our products in the open brand, we have no competition. Yeah. It's gonna be phenomenal. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Now, the other good thing is your average sale will go up and your UPTs will go up. That'll help your account a lot. So what I mean by that, guys out there that don't. So you have five, six products now launched. Maybe you won't sell everyone. Everybody's going to go in and buy one product, one and a half, but because you have so many things that are related, your average sale might go to 1.3, 1.4 now because they'll just grab everything because they'll get it for right. free on Prime Day. So right. I think that will help a lot. So your average sale will go up, which increases your overall sale. So yep. that's where I like, you know, it's just, you know, you're regularly sold together type things. And, yep. and, and for, for brand notoriety, it helps. Obviously, the more people... And then for those that have that are were lucky enough to get a Prime, what like a Lightning deal on Prime Day, th those people are definitely going to benefit too because you're going to sell a lot of a lot of units that day. And see, so, we we did get one of them, and we're contemplating not yeah. doing it because we don't have enough inventory. Well, the, the well, there you go. The, I mean, I you're just going to give it away. You're going to sell it regardless. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so I mean, I mean, and like, it's going to cost you five hundred bucks. But listen, know? it's so. the same thing. It's the same thing with retail art. You know, a dude will have. Uh, you know, we'll have 50 copies of Super Mario Brothers for the Wii, and then the guy puts it for 19.99. I'm not going to lower it. He's just going to sell his through, and I'm still going to get $30 for ours because they're eventually all going to sell. They might not sell as fast at 30, but we'll right. sell through everyone because I can't replace them. That's the only thing with retail art. You can't replace it, right? right, right with right. us, you can replace it. But okay, just say you do lightning deals on box uh, on Boxing Day, lightning deals on on uh, on uh, Prime Day. You commit 500 units, but you only have 600. You're going to sell all 500 of them. You're gonna have 100 units for three months until your new units come in. So right. what have you really gained? Like what have right, you done? Right. Like you gotta wait two months of being out of stock, which is gonna hurt your ASIN. So, mm -hmm. you know that again. I'm I'm pretty calm about all this stuff. Like I don't get overhyped about that stuff. And you're right. You're in a situation. If you don't have any stock, I would cancel the lightning deal. What are you gonna do? Right. You're just gonna, right. you know. It's yep. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. All right, Chris. We got any last minute questions? We got about 10 more minutes. We do have two quick ones. We have one from Frank. He said, are you guys using Seller Central or AMS PPC? I do some AMS headline and banner ads, but I don't run sponsored product ads through AMS because the reporting just isn't there. Uh, so even if you do have access to AMS, which is Amazon Marketing Services, for those of you guys who aren't aware of what AMS is, those are like the, the banner ads that show up across the top or the little text, uh, text block ads that show up directly underneath the buy box. They perform okay. I, I tend to get a much better performance out of standard PPC, which is you can do that sponsored products. And if you're running sponsored products, run that through <laughs> Seller Central so you get the report. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not clicking it. He's, <laughs> uh, he's focused. Uh, he's focused. <laughs> Scott, maybe you could tell me a little bit about that. Oh man! <laughs> right, what do you got, Chris? <laughs> what else? No. You got? Strictly PPC. Uh, the, <laughs> the Monarchs. Let's talk about the Monarchs. The Monarch. I love the Monarchs. Uh, the other one is from Gerald. He said, what value do I need to, to change in my product listing setup if I can't change my title? I'm very frustrated. Is it a Seller Central phone call? Yes, you have to call Seller Central. What probably happened, and this actually happened to us on the product that we've been talking about, that we've had the issue where we can't run PPC effectively. There's a change that's stuck in the system somewhere or Amazon flagged it for some reason, either the change didn't submit or something's wrong. Right. The catalog team should be able to clear that change and allow you to then use that. Have either of you guys run into another solution or a, a different issue there? No, I, again, I mean, it's, it, it's one of those things, right? It's like you could call one rep and get it oh. resolved and then you can call 12 and it still isn't resolved, even though they tell you it will be. Right. And that no. with, with the title or any listing changes, and I know uh, our friend Katie Kay had this issue. We did a, a hot seat for her. Man, that was like a year ago at this point that we did that. At least, um, yeah. And she, she didn't have control over half. She had control over some, but not all of her listings. And you do have to take care of that through Seller Central. They can get flagged for a number of reasons, but you do have to call in, talk to the catalog team, 
and get them to turn control of that yeah. listing back over to you. So and in most cases they will, in some cases they'll ask you to submit changes through them. Yeah. Just do it. A lot of times <laughs> take a day or two a lot to reflect, of, but they'll approve it and, and they'll handle it for you. But I would just call back and ask to get control back over that listing. And if a lot of times, prove, the, you know, if you're brand registered, that helps in our case, we're brand registered. So they just say, Oh, you're the brand registered owner of the listing. You should have control over that. We don't know why it got held mm -hmm. up in the system. It's cleared. It's good to go. And it took five minutes after I finally got on the phone with someone after an hour on hold. So you need a little no, some, bit of patience some, and a little bit of perseverance, but other than that, you're good to go. What I was going to say, sometimes we found this, and this was a bigger pain. You call them, it's called retail contribution, guys. So the retail side of Amazon has taken over your title and your listing because they didn't like it, the, eight, the actual listing itself. Not the catalog team, but the retail contribution. I don't know why they do it. It's happened to us about four or five times a year. They take it over. You can't change the title. And you got to go back and fight with them. They actually don't change it. They don't allow you to take over your listing again, but they will change it for you. It's sure. Such a pain. And, I, and the funny thing is, like, we'll have five aces and it'll only take retail contribution on one of them. So we can't change – we can change all the other titles except for one. It's crazy. Now, we don't know if that's – sometimes because it's a vendor, uh, vendor central thing type thing because, mm -hmm. you know, I, because they have, you know, ownership of our of our buy box and all that type of stuff. But, you know, even for, for our, own, uh, our own listings that we're just, you know, getting FBA to fulfill, not through vendor, they've taken it over. So that's another reason. Right. But the catalog team, if you ask for somebody in the U.S., it's a lot easier for sure to get it changed. Cool. Um, all right, Chris, are we good? Are we got any other quick questions? I think we are good to go. Scott, is there anything else you wanted to wrap up here today with? Um, yeah, actually I did. Uh, we are, um, we're about ready. I've had a lot of people emailing me since we closed the 1K Fast Track. And for anybody that's brand spanking new, oh, Chris is wearing his his swag today. Um, yeah, um, for anybody that's that's at, that's wondering about that, um, number one, the 1K Fast Track was created um, with the whole mindset of getting started really quickly to move yourself towards private label. That's what it was designed for, and it's worked really, really well. We've had two classes go through it. Um, we do a pre-challenge in there. In the pre-challenge, you're like selling stuff within seven days. Um, so I don't want to go into all the details here, but we're getting ready to reopen that. Um, and if you wanted to be uh, notified more about that, go to 1kfasttrack.com, and you can go ahead and get on the early notification list for that. Um, and then we'll be sending out um, an email here shortly. Probably we're talking in about a week, week and a half, Chris, I think is what we, we kind of talked about. So um, that will be um, available. A um, couple of changes we, we're still uh, making um, as far as the structure, the layout, and, and as far as like how you're going to go through it. But it's pretty much done. Um, and you'll also have access to uh, Mr. Sugar here, Dom, that is, um, the guy that's been at it for many years. Um, and, and people that went through the, the, the course and the class just really got a ton of value just from picking his brain. Um, so anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. That's pretty cool. Um, I know you, myself, the rest of our team had a, a, about a four-hour conversation yesterday on some new things for TAS. It was only um, about two and a half, but it felt like four, yeah. I think it was closer to three, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, um, that there, um, there's some cool things that we're working on behind the scenes a little bit, and we'll be talking more about that as we get closer. But just to let you guys know, like, we're really, like, we're immersing ourselves in this business because we believe in it. And it's funny because um, I'm actually going through a thing right now where I want to figure out, like, what to invest in. If you have, like, $50,000, like, laying around, and I know a lot of people are like, well, 50,000 laying around. There's people right now that are sitting on 50 grand that are like, what do I do with it? It's in the bank. I don't know what to do with it. So I actually, I put a poll together or actually just a little thread. And I had people say like, what would you do with it? And some people said I'd invest in private labels. Some people said I would buy, you know, some, some real estate. Some people said that I would buy some stock, but then I'd do some PL. Like, so it's just interesting to see how people would, would kind of use it. Um, and it's funny because I keep going back to, like I'd invest in another product or I'd invest in another couple of products because I know that that's working right now. And then I would then still be able to decide, okay, maybe I want to do something over here and maybe invest in something outside of Amazon. Cause I do believe that you should take some of that liquid cash that's coming through the cash flow and start investing it into something else that's not dependent on the Amazon thing. I'm a big believer in that, but it's, it's definitely a tough thing. But anyway, um, 
So again, just moving forward, we are immersing ourselves in this business model. And we're talking about e-commerce, we're talking about some retail art, we're talking about just selling products online as far as physical products, private labeling and all that stuff. So we have a lot of cool things planned moving forward because we're gonna be working through this stuff and we're gonna be taking some people on the journey with us. And that's really what this uh, four hour conversation was about, how we're actually gonna do this and what we can do. Um, so uh, just keep your eyes and ears open for that. We'll be, we'll be keeping you guys abreast as far as what's going on there. Um, so yeah, man, I'm just excited. I've got a, got a, cool, uh, a cool week ahead of us. We had a cool week this past one. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to kind of keep rolling with this thing. It's fun, even though there's a, there's a struggle. Oh, one last thing. Um, and I mentioned this in the email. Understand that it's a process. Dom's been at this for a really long time, okay? And there's been a lot of obstacles that he's overcome. But he's learned a ton and he's still at it. He has not given up, right? And he's continuing to go at it. He's not going to give it up. It's just too good to give up. He's, and he's told me that in his own words. Um, so... Um, just understand that it is a process, it is a journey, and it is a learning lesson. And I said this in my email today. You need to understand that you have to love the process. You have to love the journey, and you have to enjoy the climb. And that basically means you have to continually grow and, and always be leveling up, and that's part of it. And if you're not into that, this might not be the right business for you. You might want to go the Wells Fargo and work there nine to five. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there, right? You might want to just go to a place that you punch in. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're after. But for me, um, it's, to me, it's, I want to have the, I guess the, the direction that I can point myself to where I want to go and have control of that. I don't want a boss telling me I'd get a, you know, 2% raise every year. Um, and I can only take off three weeks a year. Um, so anyway, there's my rant. So enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, enjoy the climb. That's it. That's all I got, Chris. That was long. It was good, though. It was good. Cool. So are you ready to wrap this up? Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Dom, I'll chat with you later, brother. Hopefully all is well. I know that you've been in limbo a little bit with the kind of transfer over to the cottage from your home. So I'll be looking forward to catching up with you as far as how things have been going on your personal life as well, not just within the business side of things. Um, we spent a lot of time together recently, so... We haven't been able to really catch up. Um, and Chris, I'll be talking to you as well. So guys, that's it. Have an awesome, amazing weekend. As always, remember that we are here for you and we believe in you. But you have to, you have to. Come on, say it with me. Chris, let's do it. Let's do it, Tom. You ready? On the count of three. Let's do it. One, two, three. Take, Take action. action. All right. Put it in, guys. All right. We'll see you guys. Take care. Have an awesome, amazing weekend. We'll see you.